What is up my thrifty friends? Tabs here from the Urban Goddess Shop. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video, we have a fun one. I have 20 sales, over $40. These are in the last two weeks. These are items that are selling in my closet, items that I'm sourcing. We're gonna go over style tags. I am also breaking down some serious analytics at the end, something that is new, but I think I'm gonna be doing going forward. Uh, I'm going to provide you with some more data and hopefully help you make good decisions when you're outsourcing or just kind of give you an idea of what I find is moving for me. If you are new to my channel, I'm a Canadian reseller. I'm a mom to two girls, a wife. I work part-time in a hospital pharmacy and I love to sell used clothing. It is my jam. This is what I do here on YouTube and share everything about my business and hopefully help you grow your own side hustle of reselling. Okay, this is a great video. I have so much information to share with you guys, so I'm gonna just jump right in. First, we have the 20 sales, and then we're doing the data at the end, so stay tuned till the end. First sale of the two weeks is a pair of Lululemon Wonder Under gray crop leggings. These were in a size eight. They sold for $40. These were an older style. The size dot didn't have the letters and numbers around it. And uh, the reason why I grabbed it was because it was a neutral tone. I knew that this would be like a timeless piece. It didn't really date it where some of the colors or the seams can really date the Lulus and when they were made. But this I felt like was a safe bet. So 40 bucks, not too bad for that. Style tags that I would use for like a plain gray legging would be neutral, minimalist, and athletic. I've been using athletic recently and I love using it. Minimalist is also, and neutral. These are like really common keywords that I use on my items. Next up is a favorite pair that I had in my closet and they were Aritzia Wilfred tie front crepe pants, sand color and size 12. They sold for $77. Now here's something about these pants. They actually had a flaw. It looked like in the front, right under the pocket, someone had maybe snagged the pants on like a desk or something. There was like an L shaped rip. Uh, it looks like they went to a tailor, had them stitch very well, same color thread to the material, like a perfect match, and it was hardly noticeable. So I did put that into the listing. I took really good pictures. And uh, yeah, I'm not surprised at the $77. This style of pants are being sold at Aritzia currently right now, and you will rarely find a size 12 online. Some factors that these pants had going on were the color neutral, perfect for heading into spring, size 12, and a current style that's being sold right now. $77, I will take that and run. Uh, style tags that I used for this were tapered leg, academia and contemporary some more like favorite style tags and keywords that i try and incorporate into my listings uh for aritzia it's pretty easy to get listing descriptions because on the tag on the back of the tag there's usually an article number and that is kind of like the style number so you can search that find out what the style name is of it and then take a look at what they have for a description Next up is another sale that's not surprising, and it's a Babaton plaid power hip blazer in gray, size eight, and it sold for $80. So power hip blazers are currently being sold at Aritzia right now, and they retail for $198. This is not a current colorway that they're producing, but the power hip blazer is just such a classic blazer at Aritzia right now that even if you have an older style, they're selling for like over $70. These are a safe bet. I would pay up for these. I would pay like $30, $40 for one of these blazers, depending on the color and the size. Uh, but yeah, I find they do really well and they're holding a really good value right now. Style tags that I use for this are plaid, contemporary, and academia. Although with this jacket, I don't think style tags play into it selling. I think it's just a really desirable style, brand, color, size. So I think that's really why this one sold. Next up, I have a pair of Levi's Wedgie straight leg jeans. These were in a size 27 and they sold for $63. I am still buying Levi's. I know lots of you guys say they don't move for you. I am very specific to like sizes, colors, distressing, uh, I kind of, yeah, I have like a mental image of what I'm looking for. It's really hard to describe in a video, 
but I think I just maybe have a Midas touch for choosing them. Uh, and yeah, I don't know, $63. I probably paid about 16 bucks for these. And after Poshmark fee, shipping discount, net earnings were 46. So that's a $30 profit. I am okay with that. That's good. I will continue to source Levi's. It's just something I find often. I think it's a very popular style that uh, people in my area are wearing. So it is, I do find it more readily than I know other people do. Next up, we have a pair of Lululemon Fast and Free High Rise Leggings in a size six. They sold for $73. Uh, this color, I will grab every single time. This is the second time I've sold a, this color, like similar color or this color palette, I would say, in the last two months. And I'm always fetching top dollar for them. You don't find a lot of them online, and I think that's what makes them unique. You find a lot of black, gray, navy blue, burgundy, maroon, like those colors. There's tons of them in the resale market. But this colorway, for some reason, you just don't find often. And I think that's why um, people just pay up for it. And it's just, it's a beautiful color. It's a very, very popular color. To me, it's like a unicorn. If I find anything in this color... I am picking it up because I know that I'm going to be able to make some money off of it. And typically my Lulu cost of goods is, I mean, it varies because I, I source at different places, but it can be anywhere from, I don't know, $15 to $25. And I am selective in how current they are. So I am only paying up for very current styles and I will look them up in the store. If they're older than 2019, I probably wouldn't pay over $20 for them. But these, I would pay up for 100%. Next is an Anthropology MLE, that's the brand, I guess. So it's sold at Anthropology, but the brand is MLE and it's a ruched halter top. It's sold for $65. I have a couple of these in different sizes. Something I struggle with, and I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but sometimes when I have one style and multiple sizes and I list it, I don't know why, but the inventory number does not connect to what I list. And then it never fails. I am searching through my inventory trying to find this and someone else had bought this top in my live sale and I could for the life of me could not find it and then this other sale went through and I was like oh my gosh like this is a lot of money I need to find this and I was looking through and found it and then then I felt bad because the person from the live sale thank you they reached out to me and they were like hey I saw you sold it again and I'm like yeah okay I'm gonna find this top or whatever and when I find it I'll let you know and then just send in an offer for the same price or whatever so I was able to honor the price to the first person that had purchased it from my show and then I also got this sale which was really cool. Uh, style tags that I'm using for these tops are bohemian, minimalist, and beach. I don't know beach is kind of a new one for me but I felt like if anyone was going on a beach holiday or looking for like swimwear type stuff or like beachwear type stuff this was perfect. I don't know if it's a style tag that I should be like putting out there and people should be using but I threw it in here. And for the bohemian, I have a question. I use bohemian just because it's like the populated um, style tag that Poshmark has. But does anyone just use boho and like create their own style tag? I would like to know that because the thought crosses my mind every single time I list something and use bohemian. I'm like, should I be using just boho? Do people actually search bohemian or does it like auto populate that into the search? I don't know, but let me know. I'm going to take a tally kind of of who, how you guys are using that style tag. Okay, next up is one of my favorite sales from the last two weeks, and it was a vintage chill cat wool knit brown dad sweater in size large. Those are all the words I put into my title, and it sold for $70. This was such a cool piece. I love the colors. It was Canadian made. It was wool. Uh, the pattern on it, like, everything about it it yeah had it going on I knew that this was going to sell quickly uh style tags that I would use for this type of item would be wool vintage and coastal I really like using coastal 
and it's not just a style tag that I like slap on everything but I, I truly shop the coastal aesthetic and to me coastal is like west coast vibe fisherman town definitely like those wool knits the fair isle patterns um icelandic that kind of stuff but yeah i these tend to to get a top dollar for them and uh, i just love finding them next i had an rd style plaid jacket um extra small this was actually a consignment clients uh we had finished the term and i bought actually some of her inventory from her and this one sold for 51 dollars in my live sale which i was so blown away like about the bidding that was going on for it but if you've ever looked to buy one of these rd style jackets i mean i think they retail for like 100 130 dollars canadian which is quite a bit of money. 50% off on it is a good deal. And uh, yeah, I just love their shackets. If I can find them and the cost of goods is pretty reasonable, I'll pick them up. They're almost a guaranteed flip. Next is a new to me brand. It's not new to me, but like I just started finding it, you know, in the last month or two, but Aloe Yoga. This was a pair of Aloe Yoga compression leggings in size small. They sold for $66. This was one of the first listings that I used Magiscriptor for and they sold within like two days. Thoroughly impressed um, with Magiscriptor. If you haven't checked it out, I'm going to pop a video up here. This is where I'm just talking about the new AI software that you can use. But yeah, I, I'm happy with this. These aloe leggings are now consistently selling for over $50. So if I can source them for the right price, I'm going to grab them. Aloe definitely is a quality brand and uh, their retail value is pretty high as well. Next is a Lululemon City Stroll coat, uh, size 8 Frontier Tan, and it sold for $161. Now, I paid, oh, I can't remember. I think I paid $60 or $70 for this jacket. And I did have, I think, a couple dollars off, but whatever. I'm going to say I probably paid about $65 for this jacket. I have been sitting on it for two months in my piles of stuff and I finally got it listed and it sold within a week. I knew that this was going to be a quick seller but I didn't think it was going to sell that quickly. It's a newer style. I think it's within the last two years. Neutral tone, good size, size 8. But uh, yeah, this was a really good investment and in flip. So it sold for $161. The net earnings were $128.80. And say I had $65, I pretty much doubled my investment. I made $60 off of this uh, jacket, which is pretty cool. I'm happy with that. Actually, yeah, about 60 bucks. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. And like a quick flip. If I would have just listed it when I first sourced it, man, could have made that money quicker. <laughs> okay. Moving along, we're about halfway through. Uh, next up is a Skims cotton bodysuit. This was a ribbed one. It was in a size large. I sourced this for myself um, when I did some of that Skims purchasing, and this was in the second batch of Skims that I purchased. The average cost of goods was about $40 in the second batch. So yeah, this sold for $65. My net earnings were $52. I paid $40. Really, I made $12. Nothing to write home about. But the skims have brought a lot of attention to my closet. A lot of attention. So I think even though I'm not turning a high profit, it's definitely bringing that clientele into my closet and perhaps helping with sales. Like, I don't know, I don't have data on that. There's no way for me to figure that out. But I do firmly believe that if you know what your, I call them my avatar, but your ideal shopper is looking for, if you can get some of those items that really draw people in, uh, they will look at other items in your closet. They'll check other things out. Is there something they can bundle with? Can they get a better deal? Those are like show store. Those are like, what do they call Door crashers at the mall, right? my skims in my closet um there's two things i think that are like door crashers for me one is my levi's i got a ton of levi's the other one is my skims those are two door crashers um the people that i'm shopping for my ideal shopper they like those brands that's what they're that's what they're looking for and they're trying to get a deal on them just my rationale <laughs> how i do it I, and everyone can do things differently but yeah this is kind of how i view things in my business and how i shop 
and how I source, then the types of items that I'm looking for. And I try and have like um, kind of a curated closet. It's not brand specific or like one specific style, but it's a type of person that I'm shopping for and what their needs are, right? Okay, moving along. Next up, we have a Free People Flower Power cardigan sweater. This sold for $70 and it sold within 24 hours. I also used Magiscriptor for this description, but I don't know if it played into that. I think this is just a desirable sweater. I didn't realize how desirable it was. And I did have someone reach out to me on Instagram and she said that this is a bolo style. So I probably could have asked a little bit more for it. Um, but now I know if I come across this style, I'm going to list it a little bit higher because this is twice I've sold this sweater and it sells within 24 or 48 hours and for like 70 bucks. That's good in my books. I think I paid like $15 for it. Pretty good. Pretty good flip. Next up is a pair of Lululemon Reveal tight leggings in a size four. They sold for $59.00. I probably wouldn't have grabbed these. This is not my favorite style of legging to sell. Uh, I just feel like they sell slowly for me personally, but they were a neutral tone and that's why I took the chance on them. Uh, yeah, they, they kind of like a really cool lace cutout at the bottom. They're not too old of a style, but I don't know. They just don't move as well for me. So this was a pretty surprising sale. I have been listing my newer Lululemon leggings at like 85 90 dollars because a lot of them are retailing now like depending on the style like obviously not a line ones but some of these they're actually retailing for 119 dollars or 118 dollars canadian so if i'm listing them at 90 dollars, that's already 30 dollars off and if you shop on lululemon you know you don't often get those deals in the size that you're looking for. So I'm hoping that that plays into it and just trying to know what styles and colors people are looking for and are willing to pay pay more for it's it's a learning game trust me it's like learn and fail and learn and fail <laughs> and move forward and uh, just selling a lot of lulu has helped me learn what is worth more and what isn't okay next up is a pair of wilfred brian pants these were a wide leg crop um kind of like knit pant they sold for 72 dollars which I'm kind of surprised about, but they're a beautiful pant. Uh, so in that sense, I'm not, but still was, because it's not your typical trouser pant. Style tags that I used for this were merino wool, because they were merino wool knit, dark academia, which I think is perfect for these, and minimalist, which is another one of my favorite style tags. This was a good sale, a really good flip. Next is a pair of Lululemon 2021 Wonder Train High Rise Leggings in a size 16. Uh, these sold for $70, retail for $128. They were new with tags, which is so cool. And yeah, I know with also my lar like my larger sizes, and I would say probably size 14 and up, I am waiting for specific people to find them. They're not like quick sellers, but I feel like they are top dollar sellers. So I'm always looking for plus size. I just don't come across it often. And it actually breaks my heart because I wish I could have more of a size inclusive closet. And I have had people comment that where they're like, a lot of your stuff is small, extra small, maybe medium, but that's just all I have access to. Like I just don't find a lot of large, extra large and plus size. Although I wish I did. I truly wish I did, but I can only sell what I can find, right? Uh, next is another really cool sale, quick flip. I only had this listed for a couple days. I use Magiscriptor for it as well. I encourage you to look into my closet, look at my solds because these are some magical descriptions. Uh, it sold for $90. I think I had it listed at maybe like $120 to 140 I can't remember what the original price was, but she sent me an offer. I bantered back at 90 and she accepted it. So we're both happy. And I had the title as Vintage Hand Knit Cowichan Hunting Sweater in a size large. And there was also a flaw. The zipper like in the top inch didn't zip up all the way. It was like broken. And uh, when I used Magiscriptor, I actually forgot because I, yeah, I forgot about the flaw and I didn't go back 
and state it. So prior, I did have a really good picture showing it, but I didn't actually state it in the listing. So I contacted her after the sale before I shipped and was just like, hey, this is the scoop. The zipper is broken in the top inch. It's shown in the pictures, but it's not listed in the description. And she said that was fine. She was cool with it. She said she was excited to receive it. So happy that sale went through and I cannot believe I forgot to put that in. So that is my only tidbit. If you are using Magiscriptor, don't forget to type in your flaws after because I, I, I personally don't have a lot of flawed items, but that was like, that was a big flaw I felt like that I missed. So happy. Yeah, I'm happy she was understanding. All right, next up, Levi's rib cage straight ankle jeans. Um, these were a medium wash, size 27. They sold for $59. These were listed for a day. They were such a quick sale. Uh, yeah, Levi's rib cage. I've had really good luck every time I pick them up. I think they're selling reasonably quick within a week or two. So for that reason, I will continue to source them. I did use style tags, streetwear, 70s, and wide leg. I didn't really know what to use with this, and I don't tag streetwear often, but I feel like those um, rib cage wide leg, like it just has a streetwear aesthetic. I, I don't know how to describe it. If you don't know what streetwear is, Google it, look it up, take a look at what falls into it, but it's usually like, I don't even know how to describe it, but yeah, I, I felt like this fell into it, um, and I do use it once in a while. Okay, we're down to the last couple sales. So this one was a bundle and it went to Carolyn. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, it's a two piece bundle. First is an anthropology black button down blouse in a size small. And the second item was a pair of Lululemon Align tan colored full length leggings. I actually could not find the uh, stock photo for this specific color. It was really difficult. Uh, the bundle sold for $100, so approximately 50 bucks an item, and I'm happy with that. Thank you so much. I know you're gonna love them. That blouse, perfect. And those leggings, I mean, they're just, I love neutral tone. You love neutral tone. We love neutral tone. <laughs> uh, it's just, yeah, that is an aesthetic that I shop for often. So thank you so much for the purchase. And the last sale we're going to discuss is a Patagonia uh, Navy. It's it's called the Patagonia Fitzroy Bear Uprisal Hoodie in Navy. Oh my gosh, that's so weird. <laughs> that's such a weird title, but that's exactly what Patagonia calls it. I was able to grab a good description on it and it sold for 50 bucks. Not too bad. I don't find a lot of Patagonia, but when I do, it usually sells well and for a good dollar. And uh that is the final sale from this uh, video, but we are now going to dive into my analytics. And this is the fun part. I feel like I'm definitely going to start doing this more often for you guys. Okay, so total sales gross number is $1,996. Not too bad. Uh, 44 items were sold in this um, in the last two weeks and the average sale price including my live show was $45.36. That's awesome. Um, I am I am shooting for $50 but I know that those live sales are kind of driving down my ASP right now. For the live show I sold I tried to sell a total of 20 items 16 items sold. Uh, the gross sales for the live show were $425, and that left me with an average sale price of $26.50, average. Uh, the cost of goods on average was $8, which left me with an average profit of $13, and that would mean the profit on the show was $208. Please understand, this is all very average numbers. I'm trying to average it out. I'm trying to give, like, round numbers, but... I just want to be realistic with you guys um, just because I don't, I don't know, live sales aren't for me, but I want to tell you why they're not for me. So my show profited $208. That's after cost of goods and after fees. Not too bad, right? But we're going to factor in other things. So I have probably two hours minimum in sourcing for this show. Minimum. <laughs> I have one hour of prep. I have one hour for the show. I have one hour to ship and drop off the packages. So that puts me at about five hours to do this. Um, if I look at what I made net and then divide it by the five hours, it's $41.60 an hour, which is a pretty good 
hourly wage. Uh, it is more than my average hourly wage for the year 2022. Now, if I take away the live sale um, total sales and the amount of items I sold, so basically my ASP when I'm not taking out the live sale is actually $56 an item. That's a big jump. So with the live sales, it drops my average sale price over $10. Like that's quite a bit. And um, the average cost of goods, so yeah, normally I'm making $56 or I'm selling for $56 an item. My cost of goods is $20 on average for those items. But my ROI is still, so my return on investment is still much greater than what I'm getting from the live shows. And that's really what I'm trying to hit home here is that, yeah, I, I am making a profit on these live shows, but my return on investment is actually a lot higher with the traditional selling. And I can't readily source to do a lot of live shows. So I just don't, I don't know how it's going to fit into my business model. And I've talked about that before, but I just wanted to give you guys like numbers, why I make these decisions. And even though numbers seem good, what they are compared to what my regular sales are, right? And why, why it doesn't work for me basically. But yeah, I, I wanted to break this down. So the top three brands that I'm selling right now, my top brand is Lulu. And that doesn't surprise me in January. People are looking for athletic wear right now. Aritzia is my other top and anthropology. Now understand that my brands and my top selling brands are also going to be relevant to what I'm sourcing and listing. And these are brands and styles that I am listing. So my data is only going to reflect what I'm sourcing, right? It doesn't mean that there aren't other brands that are selling. It's just, this is what I source the most of and it sells well for me. So I continue to source more of it. Um, and I had, I also wanted to tell you guys, a majority of those sales, like I think it was like over 70% of my sales are from single sales and they are offers to likes. So I haven't been getting a lot of bites off of bundles in dollar amount, but the single sale offers, that's the biggest percentage of my sales right now. So I continue to do um, OTLs. I think they work offers to likers and yeah. So that's kind of my data breakdown. I hope it helps you guys out. I hope it gives you kind of a bigger picture of what's going on in my business. It's not just, this is what's sold, but these are the numbers. This is the dollars. These are my cost of goods. Like I do calculate all of these things, even though I don't always share everything about my business. I am well aware of what is moving, what's making me money and what I need to leave behind. But what I would love to know is what are your top selling brands right now? When you go into your um, closet inside and you look at what's been selling over the last month, I want to know what are your top selling brands? Um, is there anything that's selling like hotcakes that, you know, you're seeing like quick flips within a week of listing that are selling? Please drop them down below because you probably source different than me and your best selling brands are going to be different than mine. And uh, yeah, I think the more we like share and help each other and share brands, the, the better off we're all going to be. Okay. I am heading out of here. If this video brings you value, make sure to give me a thumbs up and let me know. Also, if you're not subscribed, tap that subscribe button on your way out. I'm wishing you guys all many sales. Sales are starting to pick up January, 2023. Let's do this and I will see you next time. Bye.